David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another stay-at-home fountain pen review. Today I have for you a pen from a company that you're probably not that familiar with. That's one of the things I enjoy about my channel is the opportunity to share with you some brands and pens that might not have otherwise been on your radar. The company I'll be discussing today is Venustas, and the pen I'll be showing you is the Magna. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Venustas Magna, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Venustas for providing this pen for review. Venustas was founded a few years ago by a gentleman in Paris, France by the name of Lucio Rossi, who is a professor at an architectural design college. Uh, he was tired of seeing the same designs present in pens for ages and wanted to create something modern and more contemporary. So he designed a mechanical pencil for his own use. Uh, when he began having people ask if they could purchase one of his pens, then he decided to go into business. Uh, he actually decided to produce a fountain pen and launch some designs via a couple of Kickstarter campaigns. Uh, Lucio realized he needed some help in his burgeoning operation, so his friend and fellow architect Filippo Torelli came on board as a co-founder. Uh, they moved the operations from Paris to Italy and went from small-scale handmade manufacturing to working with an established manufacturing partner who could create a more consistent and high-quality product. Okay, enough about the company background. Let's actually take a look at a pen. It arrives in this box made from recycled cardboard. It's an interesting design. Uh, it has the Venustas name on top. Uh, now, the Venustas name is unique. It is actually spelled in Latin, where the letter U does not exist, but the phonetic sound of the letter does. The company name is a reference to the philosophy of an ancient Roman architect by the name of Vitruvius. Uh, he believed buildings should have three main qualities. And forgive my rusty Latin, there was firmitas, meaning a building needs to be solid, uh, vitilius, it had to serve a purpose, and finally, venustas, it needed to be beautiful. Uh, the lid just comes right off. There is a little flap, there is a use and care guide, and then inside we have the pen. This is the Venustas Magna. Uh, Venustas actually offers two different models. There is the Carbon T, which is slightly thinner, and the section design is different, and it is a cartridge converter pen. Uh, the Magna here is slightly larger, and there's a few other differences that we'll go over here in a little bit. The pen is round and straight, and it gives the initial impression that the pen is rather straightforward, but as you'll see here in a little bit, it has a very interesting and unique design. Um, the pen is made from a linear carbon fiber. Here's a microscope shot of the material, which runs vertically through the pen. Carbon fiber construction is typically either linear, like you see here, or actually from a previous review, this is the carbon fiber from the Monty Winfield High Water, which is also linear, but runs horizontal on the pen. Or it is woven like you see here on the Monteverde Regatta Sport, which I reviewed a while back. I like carbon fiber as a material. It's light, extremely durable, and I like the matte feel of it as well. Uh, let's take a look at the top of the cap. There, it is adorned with a lead-free brass insert containing the Venustas logo. Over time, this brass should tarnish a bit, giving it a bit more character. The cap is straight and has a smooth, angled transition to the section. Uh, there is a little semicircular cutout to help you orient the pen and help you identify the transition from the cap to the section. Uh, the section is straight. Uh, the only exterior feature on the section are these two very small screws, one on either side of the section. The function of these is to secure the interior parts of the pen to the section. Now, something interesting about these small screws, when Lucio was creating his first pens, he needed some small screws like these. He used what are called fencing screw tips. Uh, these are screws which are designed to be used with the end of Epe fencing swords, uh, and they have continued using those fencing tip screws. There is another angled transition to what I will call the barrel of the magnet. And then on the end, it is cut out at an angle. And we'll discuss this part here more in a minute. Um, I will say these angled transitions are very well machined. Here is what one looks like under a microscope. And you can see that the cut is very clean and precise. 
the cap pulls off. Uh, there now on the cap itself, there's a stainless steel sleeve. It has a slot on one side and on the other, it says made in Italy. And I'm assuming that's a serial number of this pen. The Magna is not a limited edition or numbered edition. Uh, I just believe that's the serial number. And then here is the nib. It is unpolished stainless steel and is available in fine, medium, and broad. At an additional cost, there is a 14 karat gold nib option as well in those same sizes. Uh, here's a close-up of the Venustas logo stamped on the nib. I think the ink that is creeped in there looks rather cool in the little crevices. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The nib is semi-hooded and has a unique profile. I like how the presented angles from the nib and the feed to the metal and then to the carbon fiber increase in angle. I feel that it flows better than if everything was at the same angle. The Magna has a non-traditional section. It is straight. Um, there's no ridge around the edge and it's not concave at all. It kind of reminds me of the section of the Lamy Dialogue 3. Um, it's rather thick. Uh, and that with the inclusion of this secondary metal piece, the nib is rather extended from the section. Now, my inclination is to want to grip this pen right on the edge of the carbon fiber, but with the drop off from the section to the metal housing and the sharpness of the edge of this carbon fiber, uh, that's not very comfortable. Now, the carbon fiber isn't really sharp, just gripping it on the edge is a little uncomfortable for me. So I find myself having to be intentional about where I grip the section and do so a little bit further back than I typically would. Um, I do find that my inclination is to have my pen, kind of my grip, creep up closer to the edge. And so I find myself having to re-grip and pay attention to my grip more than I typically would. Um, the pen is plenty long enough to use unposted. The cap does post. You have to kind of align it so that the, uh, the angles align. Uh, and, but the cap is very light. It does post securely. Uh, and so even though uh, it extends the length of the pen by an inch and a quarter or so, I don't feel it back weights the pen or throws off the balance. The Magna is a plunger filler. The barrel just pulls off here to expose the filling system. Uh, this pen is inked right now, so I'm not going to demonstrate it, but it's very simple to use. You just depress the plunger and stick your nib into the bottled ink of your choice, then extend the plunger back into place. And doing so will suck the ink up into the inner chamber. Now, one design element of this pen that I think look nice, looks nice but really scares me a bit is the end of the barrel. Um, the end of the plunger peeks through the end. And if you're not careful, then you could accidentally push down on the plunger and potentially squirt out some ink, which would not be a good situation. Now, if you post the cap, uh, then it's not an issue because that's covered up. Uh, but if you have the, when you have this pen capped, then the same situation is present. Now, in using this pen for a few weeks, I have not accidentally depressed the plunger at all, but it's just very tempting. It's almost like the knock on a vanishing point. It's almost begging to be depressed. Like I said, I haven't experienced issues with it, but it's something definitely to keep in mind. The Venustas Magna is available to purchase directly from the Venustas site, as well as on Applebaum site. On the Applebaum site, the Magna is selling for right around $240, which I feel is a very reasonable price for what you receive with this pen. Um, it's different than anything else in my collection, which I appreciate. Um, I'm a big fan of the carbon fiber material, and the angled transitions are unique. And there's a satisfaction when capping or posting this pen uh, when you kind of realign the transitions just right. Uh, when I brought this pen to our last pen club meeting before the lockdown, uh, it was one that fascinated folks. Um, it's something that when you're handed, you have to kind of take a bit of time to figure out what's going on and how it's all put together. And that discovery can be fun. Uh, this is a pen that I've enjoyed taking a closer look at. So now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Venustas Magna. 
Uh, here it is with the Lamy Dialog 3 that I mentioned earlier. And then regard to a couple of other carbon fiber pens, here is the Stipula Carbon Florentina, which was an exclusive for Goulet pens. Uh, and then here was another exclusive for Goulet pens that I reviewed recently, which was the Monty Winfield High Water. And then regard to some other pens, here it is with a Leonardo Momento Zero. Here it is with a Lamy 2000. And then finally, here it is with a Pilot Vanishing Point in the Raiden Water Surface Finish. In regard to an uncapped comparison, here it is with that Leonardo Momento Zero. And then here it is with the Monty Winfield Hightower. And then finally, here it is with the Lamy 2000. Before we started the writing, I wanted to give you a closer look. I had said that it was very satisfying when you cap and uncap and kind of disassemble this pen when you put this together and then it lines right up. And it's actually kind of interesting because if for some reason you like misalign it just slightly, all you have to do is twist it. And then it's kind of very satisfying the way it just kind of comes together and the seam, dis seam disappears. In regard to the writing sample, we have the Venustas. Magna. This is a medium stainless steel nib. And the ink that I'm using today is Diamine. Smoke on the water. This is what the ink looks like. Uh, it's a nice kind of bluish green with a nice red sheen to it. Uh, it is something similar to the Ackermann Blau Groen uh, without the sheen, of course. And then this is what it looks like with Lamy Petrol. Uh, this is the bottle that it comes in. It comes in these nice 80 milliliter bottles. This was part of Diamine's rock and roll collection uh, that originally was available only in Germany. I'm not sure if it still is or if it's available elsewhere. Um, I did have a comment from someone on Instagram that made a lot of sense when they said that Diamine really missed out on making this ink a deep purple, uh, who is the band that originally sang this song, uh, Smoke on the Water. And being a child of the uh, the 70s and the early 80s uh, I very much remember that song and you know I remember my my friend Kenny uh, getting a guitar getting a very first guitar and I went over to his house uh, when he had first gotten it and the very first thing he did when he picked it up was play smoke on the water that was pretty much uh, what you were required to do when you were in the 70s and early 80s if you got a guitar you needed to learn how to play that song so in regard to the rest of the writing sample Uh, I find this medium nib to be very generous. Uh, you can get a fair amount of flex out of here. Uh, it does flex a little bit. In regard to ink flow, uh, it's fairly generous for a medium nib. In regard to reverse writing, it's actually very smooth. In regard to some fast writing, There's no issue whatsoever. So 
There we have the Venustas Magna. I think that this is a, a very interesting addition to the marketplace and something that's available for a decent price. Uh, and for that price, I think that it offers something very unique uh, and also something that performs well. So it's something that uh, I would recommend. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.